What is concerning is that for the past couple of years, um, let me have a little sip of squash. We we haven't there hasn't been any like other news. I remember a few years ago, you know, when um, there's the hoo ha between Ukraine and Russia, Ukraine and Russia, and it's like what what was going on there? I don't even know how that played out. Like it was all over the news for ages, and then suddenly, no idea how that played out. I don't even know what what the situation is in Ukraine. I literally don't. Does does anyone? Ukraine Russia conflict. What's going on? Do we know? I mean, that was 2014. Let's look at military time. Okay, we've got military times here. Oh, bloody Antifa fact. All right, cookie man. Go away. Fucking hell. Pop ups are so. I'm banning all pop ups on my website from now on. I apologize to everyone I inflicted with pop ups. Russia's conflict with Ukraine and explainer. So. What's going on now? That's what we want to know. Let's have a look. What is going. What is bloody going on? What happened? Yeah, okay, we know, we know. There was fighting. There's worry, worry, war, war. The conflict in eastern Ukraine has since killed more than 10,000 people and displaced over 1 million. I had no fucking idea. Now you might be out there going, Yeah, I fucking knew you. Well, I didn't. How many people knew? How many people were keeping an eye on this? This is... So what is going on? The Kremlin never admitted its role in the war, portraying it as a civil conflict, but overwhelming evidence suggests that Russia has been sending a sizable number of troops and advisors as well as weapons to the rebels. Blah, blah, blah. So Ukraine signed a peace accords with the separatists in 2015, calling for a ceasefire and political settlement in the East. While it helped to decrease the intensity of fighting, the accords did nothing to resolve the region's political stalemate. In the latest manifestation of Ukraine's resolve to break off with Russia once and for all, Kiev has stepped up its efforts to seek independence for its Orthodox Church. The church in Ukraine has been tied to Moscow for hundreds of years. So what's going on? You see what I'm saying? So Russia... Alright, so the most recent thing... I can find... So look at this. 20th of December... Russia finished building a high-tech security fence along annexed Crimea's border with mainland Ukraine. Russian forces annexed Ukraine's Crimea Peninsula in 2014. Yes, we know. So they got Crimea. No one, no one stopped it. Civil war killed. 10,000 people died. 10,000 people died. I didn't know that many people died. The point is, is that for the past few years, there just hasn't been any other news, really. It's all just been Brexit and Donald Trump. And that, that's it. And just bullshit. Like the bullshit we've seen today from two people having, from by the looks of it, it's probably two idiots having an argument on Twitter. One's get, one gets arrested. Brilliant. You know, but what, what's actually what's the real shit going on? Because there's real shit going on, but all we hear about is the same shit. It's like we're just stuck in one boring news cycle. Like, you hear about any what's going on in Iraq? What's going on in Afghanistan? What's going down in Syria right now? What's going on in Africa? The only other shit I hear, hear about is like Venezuela. I know some stuff going on about there, but I swear the only reason they talk about Venezuela is because it's a socialist country and there's suddenly socialism is talked about way too much now. You go, oh, we need socialism or fucking socialism. It's like, we don't need to. 
But, you know, I swear that's the only reason they talk about Venezuela, because it's, it's a polarizing thing, because you've got one side that loves it and the other side that fucking doesn't. And that's the, you know... Mm. I mean, you know, what's going on? We're, we're just completely in a bubble now. It is bullshit bubble. Current international... Oh, I forgot to write the rest of us too. Current international conflicts. Not 2018. 2019, bitch. Ten, look at this. Ten conflicts to watch in 2019. It's like one of them fucking... One of them stupid BuzzFeed things. Saying, hey, ten fashion trends that's going to take over 2019. Ten new artists to look out for in 2019. Ten hot new rappers on the scene. Ten conflicts to... Well, I can't... Very excited what conflicts I need to be watching. So, what are these conflicts? Crisisgroup.org. Okay. Come on. Why is this taking so long? Have you got like a top 10 list with pictures? <clears throat> Yemen. Okay, we know about. I know Yemen's been going on for a while. I mean, Yemen's like, what is going on in Yemen? Because it sounds pretty. It's pretty heavy. It's been going on for a while, and there's some nutters out there. Look at this. After more than four years of war and a Saudi-led siege, almost 16 million Yemenis face severe acute food insecurity. So I, you know, I mean, food insecurity. That's like. Okay, so a lot of people are going to starve to death. A great big famine. So Yemen's on the Yemen is headed for a, a fucking catastrophic humanitarian crisis that will no doubt um, increase security fears across the Middle East. That's nice. Afghanistan still. If Yemen is the world's worst humanitarian disaster, Afghanistan suffers its deadliest fighting. In 2018, the war, 40,000 people died in 2018. 40,000. I remember people talking so much about Mexico going, well, you know, this like 6,000 people have died in Mexico since certain dates and 40 fucking thousand people died. That's more than during the peak. What? When it, st it wasn't like that when it started. How many people have died? What the fuck? How many? People have died in Afghanistan. Well, obviously not of all time. Because um, that would be quite a lot of people. How many so? We're not there. Okay. So let's, let's have a look. How many people have died in Afghanistan since 2001? <clears throat> That's what we want to know. That's the data. So, what's this? What's the score? Hey, eh? what's the score? What's the score? U.S. military, U.S. military deaths. U.S. contractor deaths. So if we've got 50, uh, what's the, f all right, they're really breaking this down. So total deaths. Now when's, when's this, what's the exact time frame? So between October 2001 and October 2018, 147,124 deaths in Afghanistan. Right, that's since 2001, so it's like 18 years. Almost, almost 18, well, 17 years, really. In 2018, by one tally, the war killed more than 40,000. So, take that off. So that's 107,000. What the, f like, before 2018, so what? Uh, what? You fucking what? In 2018, the war exacted a higher toll than any 
than at any time since the Taliban were ousted from Kabul more than 17 years ago. A three-day ceasefire in June, which the Taliban and government enforced and which prompted joyous celebration by fighters and civilians alike, offered a short respite, though fighting resumed immediately afterwards. Taliban fighters now effectively control perhaps half the country. Taliban are in control, well, supposed to, whatever the Taliban means these days, who the fuck knows, but... But still, fucking hell. Do you, now do you, uh, you see why you get these conspiracy nuts out there going, well, what what don't they really want you to know about? Uh, oh, it's all smoke and mirrors. Uh, look at what you're not looking at. But fuck me. Fuck me. Is this not like an indication? You 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 got people running around going like so terrorism in Europe dropped off significantly in 2018, okay, and the media obviously had nothing less to talk about. Now apparently the biggest threat to fucking mankind is trolls and the far and the far right. There's probably about 25 people in the far right in this country, and, and fucking want to find an actual troll. Here you go. You got fucking <clears throat> Yemen's on the brink of disaster. 16 million people potentially could die in a potential famine and fucking 40,000 people died in Afghanistan last year what the fuck oh, oh, oh it's true it's true Every, what everyone says it's a distraction from what's really going on it's fucking it's gotta be true because it really is I literally I hadn't seen none of this I was just thinking like god the news cycle is just the same shit what is going on out there we're all so fucking distracted Jesus Christ <coughs> that's terrifying US Chinese tensions well that's just going to be a war between Apple and Huawei anyway and uh, <laughs> I'm getting rid of this for a Huawei so I know whose side I'm on bitch uh, I mean we know about the Chinese shit Saudi Arabia, the US Israel and Iran much like 2018, 2019 presents risks of confrontation, deliberate or inadvertent, involving the US, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and Iran. First free share of common view of the government in Tehran as a threat. Because it bloody is, always has been. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but that's like. I mean, what, I mean, what the fuck is going on in Syria? Well, we know it's that Donald Trump pulled out troops. We don't know what the fuck. What's going on in Syria? What's, 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 what's going on here? It looks as if the Syrian conflict would continue along the same path. It seemed that the regime of Bashar al-Assad, with Iranian and Russian help, would win its battle against the opposition. The war against the Islamic State would approach the finish line. Foreign actors would maintain a fragile equilibrium. Yeah, bloody, 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 blah. So the Trump administration's earlier policy of indefinitely retaining a military presence in Syria was always questionable value. It was unclear how 2,000 US troops could curb Iranian influence or create meaningful pressure on Assad regime. The fight against the Islamic State is not over, but it need not require maintaining US troops on the ground. That said, precipitous withdrawal presents one major risk. It will leave the uh, People's Protection Units, so that's the Kurdish-dominated armed group that partnered with US forces against um, ISIS and now controls roughly one third of Syrian territory, perilously exposed. The YPG could now face an attack from Turkey, which considers it a terrorist organization. <laughs> they just love what a fucking mess it is. It's like, so America partners with the YPG. Turkey considers them terrorists. So, and who are also, and Turkey are also allies of ours? Okay. Um, and the, obviously the PKK, they can think of terrorists. So, word is, I mean, basically, Syria is just going to continue to be a massive mess. Niger now, Nigerians go to the polls in February. Yeah, this is happening very soon. To elect president and a new federal legislature, and again in March, the two state governors, lawmakers. Nigerian elections are traditionally violent affairs. Ooh, you don't say. And conditions this time around are particularly combustible. The presidential contest between incumbent, was it Muhammadu Buhari and his main rival, Atiku Abu Bakr, will be hard for. I'd say he 
Buhari sounds like he might be Muslim. Um, so relations between Buhari's ruling All Progressive Congress and Abu Bakr's People's Democratic Party, which governed for 16 years until Buhari came to power, are as acrimonious in the capital as they are, blah, 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 blah. And that's not like a major con I mean... I mean, there's shit always going on in Nigeria. So Now, South Sudan, on the other hand, there's shit been going on for a long time. Since South Sudan's civil war erupted five years ago, 400,000 people have died. 400 fucking thousand. 400,000 people have died in South Sudan. In five years. That is a catastrophe. What the fuck? That, that is... <sighs> In September, President Salva Kiir and his main rival, the former vice president turned rebel leader, Riek Maka, signed an agreement to hold fire and rule together until elections in 2022. That's a bit long to hold off, isn't it? The deal satisfies, for now at least, the two antagonists' interests and those of President Omar al-Bashir of Sudan and Yoweri Museveni of Uganda. The two regional leaders with the most sway in South Sudan. Most importantly, it has reduced violence. For now, this is reason enough to support the accord, yet the odds remain stacked against it, ushering in a new era of stability. First, the deal is worryingly similar to the pact the two men signed in August 2015, which collapsed the following year, triggering a surge in fighting by envisaging elections in 2022-2022, the deal perpetuates the uh, Kia Maka, or Macha, however you want to pronounce it, rivalry until then, paving the way for another showdown. It also remains a work in progress. Most alarming, security arrangements for Juba, the capital, remain contested as do plans for unifying a national army. In Sudan, now if you don't know, like Sudan and South Sudan are different now. Like, it will wasn't too long ago that it was just one country but as we have a lot of countries in Africa similar thing happened in the Ivory Coast um, it's, it's been split in half, it's officially split in half so it's like um, I can't remember which way around I think South Sudan is like Muslim and Sudan is Christian basically, and same thing happened in or it's the other way around but the same thing happened in the Ivory Coast, it's split in half like just for, based on religion you got a Christian bit and you got a Muslim bit because they just can't get along. In Sudan, meanwhile, Bashir faces what could be a serious challenge to his own rule. In mid December, protesters took to the streets of many towns and cities, decrying high prices and urging the president to step down. Oh, God. But a prolonged crisis in its northern neighbour could be hugely destabilising for South Sudan. So it could collapse into major blood shed again, basically. Some form of third party shuttle, I mean. So. It's been a civil war. I mean, I think Sudan and South Sudan were having a conflict had a conflict and then South Sudan had a civil war I mean it's fucking jeez 400,000 people you do not hear much about that the Cameroon the crisis in Cameroon's anglophone areas is on the verge of escalating into civil war and destabilizing country that was once considered an island of relative calm in a troubled region yeah you hardly ever hear of shit coming out of Cameroon but then look Ivory Coast I went to Ivory Coast Ivory Coast is the only place in Africa I've been like really stayed and in the 90s that was considered like one of the you know most super chill African nations like that in Kenya like it was just super chill there nothing bad going on it was all cool now it's like literally one of the most dangerous countries in Africa Ivory Coast that literally just switched it just happens yeah now it's like just don't go there it's fucked man and it was like yeah it was like super chill place to go It's just how it happens. So, as demonstrations wanted wider process over the marginalisation of Cameroon's English-speaking minority, 
which represents about one fifth of the country's population. The government refused to acknowledge the Anglophones' grievance or engage their leaders as security forces violently repressed protests and jailed activists. The response fueled. Isn't that funny? Like, you know, where activists, where you get real activists, they get thrown in jail, but activists in the UK just get other people thrown in jail. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Isn't that interesting? So the uh, response fueled Anglophone's anger at the central government, pushing many protesters who had initially called only for autonomy and rights into the arms of separatist groups whose attacks started in late 2017. Then a disputed presidential election this October, which President Paul Bayer, aged 85 and in power for 36 years, oh yeah, one in which few Anglophones voted hardly helped. Nearly 10 separatist militias now battle government forces while two organisations provide direct, uh, direction from abroad. The interim government of Abazonia, the putative name of the self-proclaimed Anglophone state, and the Abazonia Governing Council, the separatists are pitted not only against Cameroonian security forces, but also against pro-government self-defence groups. Criminal gangs in Anglophone areas have taken advantage of the chaos to expand their activities. So it's killed 200 soldiers dead, 300 injured, uh, 600 separatists dead, 500 civilians have died, uh, 30,000 Anglophone refugees in Nigeria and 437,000 internally displaced in Cameroon. And here we go, Ukraine. Right, so the war in Ukraine continues to smolder with no end. So it is still going on. The fucking war in Ukraine is still going on but smoldering. I can't believe it's still happening. Spark where Russia's 2014. Yeah, we know what happened. We've been through it. The latest flashpoint is the Sea of Azov, where in November, Russian and Ukrainian vessels clashed and Russia effectively blocked access to the Kerch Strait as the mouth of the, at the mouth of the sea. The confrontation suggests that neither side sees any advantage in compromising. That's still going on. And of course, Venezuela, which we which we know about. So there you go. Have a look at this is crisisgroup.org. Ten conflicts to watch. So in, so in this time where suddenly we've just descended into uh, just bullshit of just rowing amongst each other and just having all this silly shit just, const just constantly talking about silly shit all the time that uh, fucking fucking from like where is Black Lives Matter or it was fucking transgender issues or it was fucking Brexit or fucking Donald Trump or whatever it was do you know what I'm saying the past few years just all this silly stuff and this is going on 40,000 people died in Afghanistan last year 40,000 and if that in five years 400,000 people have died in South Sudan What else is going on? Let's see what... I mean, this is just conflicts. There's other stuff going on. But we don't know about it. We can find out about it. But who bothers to find stuff out? Look at all this. Global conflict. Look at it. Here we go. Here's conflicts going on. Conflict in Ukraine. Destabilization of Mali. Boko Haram in Nigeria, we know about that a bit. Violence in the Central African Republic, African Republic. Political... Violence in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Political crisis in Burundi. What's this one? Civil war in South Sudan, just been over that. What's going on over here? Well, Al-Shabaab in Somalia, we sort of know about that. There's war in Yemen. Political inst I mean, obviously there's political instability going on in Iraq. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Civil war in Syria, we know about that. War in Afghanistan. Islamic militancy in Pakistan. Conflict between India and Pakistan. There's 
Nagorno and Karabakh conflict. Never even heard of that. That's going on. Conflict between Turkey and armed Kurdish groups. Do you even know about that? Let's see the Rohingya crisis in Myanmar. Um, well, Myanmar is not just that. Myanmar still have still has a civil war going on. It's the longest lasting civil war of all. To, well, in recent like sixty year civil war. Territorial disputes in the South China Sea. What's going on over here? And all we got over here: violence, criminal violence in Mexico. This is there's more shit than that, isn't it? Yo. So there you go. There's a little food for thought. Just by asking myself, what is actually going on right now? Well, there. Now you know. There is some shit going on out there, and you wouldn't have fucking no idea about it. Because we're caught squabbling amongst each other over fucking bullshit. Um, you know. <sighs> well, on that depressing note, let's leave it for now. Now, if you want to support anything that I do, or you want to know anything more about what I do, all the links, everything you need to know is down there. It's just down there, mate. Have a little.